Farming God's Way is an amazing solution to the food security and poverty crisis in the agricultural domain. Farming God's Way is not just a technology, but a well-balanced biblical management and technological solution to equip you to use what God has put in your hands and reveal the fullness of Jesus' promised abundant life. Pest and disease management. There can be nothing more disheartening than for a farmer to grow a beautiful crop until close to harvest time and watch it get destroyed before his eyes as a pest or disease obliterates it. We need to understand that we are working in a fallen world and we need to first and foremost be committed to pray over our crops and our lands for God's protection against pest and disease, as well as doing things in a godly order that would afford us His protection. See the biblical keys in the trainer's reference guide. Living and healthy soils. Outside of the spiritual prayer and alignment coverings that God blesses us with, one of the most overlooked issues in pest management is living and healthy soils. It is within a healthy soil that we find the God-created biological balances that are necessary for good productive growth of plants and living organisms. Healthy plants have a natural pests and disease resistance, but this only occurs when they are well fed and growing in healthy living soils. The complexity of life inside the soil is a lifetime's worth of work and falls way outside of the scope of this vegetable series to even begin to discuss. However, it is very important to say that we need a great diversity of living creatures to be present to have a stable relationship between organisms that eat dead and living plant matter and the organisms that predate on them. Sterile fields and soils are very problematic as they encourage a flare-up of pests and diseases that go completely unchecked because there are no natural predators to control those population explosions. Destroying one pest can also often wipe out all the beneficial predators, which in turn causes explosions of other pests and diseases. It is about managing these ecological balances as best possible. The best ways to improve and culture living soils are through applying high quality compost and God's blanket. But the ecological balances required may take a few committed seasons in order to reap the full rewards. We encourage farmers to get to know their biological allies. Frogs eat worms, flies, moths, slugs and snails. Earthworms build soil structure and porosity. Bees and butterflies are essential for pollination and therefore fruit set. Ladybirds eat aphids. Parasitoid wasps keep problematic caterpillars under control. Spiders and birds are also excellent at keeping pests under control, etc. This mindset that the garden must be bare soil with no bugs or living creatures is one that needs a radical adjustment before success can be achieved. Rotations. Pests and diseases build up rapidly in the soil when the same crops or families of crops are grown in the same soil year after year after year. It is imperative that the fruit, leaf and root rotations are practiced every six months with vegetables to ensure that these disease cycles are broken. This rotation will be quite successful in preventing pest and disease buildup with a full 12 month break in the design. Rotations within rotations also decrease the risk of disease accumulation even within the six month cycle. It is quite alarming to realize how many farmers are still practicing monocropping and don't understand why their crops are so frequently under severe attack. Regular inspections. Farmers should do daily inspections on their crops to observe the incidence and damage caused by pests and disease and implement good integrated pest management controls accordingly. Hand picking and hen picking. A very effective way of controlling large pests like caterpillars, beetles, snails and slugs is to hand pick them, assuming it's a small garden. It is easiest to find snails and slugs in the open at night time. Chickens can also be put into the portion of the garden that you'll be planting into for a few days to eat cutworms and other pests 
before planting. Remove diseased leaves or plants immediately. It is recommended to prune off any infected shoots or simply uproot the whole diseased plant and throw it a long way from the garden, not leaving it in the rows or at the garden perimeter or with the compost materials. In this way, you discourage the spread of that disease or pest infestation to neighboring plants and can save a crop if it's caught early enough. Traps and deterrents. Pest traps draw pests away from the plants and can be in the form of light, smell, or physical traps. A good example of a pest trap is to draw snails and slugs away from your plants by placing small cups or tins in the soil and putting two centimeters of beer in them. The beer is a strong smelling agent and the snails will be drawn down into their drunken stupor. The cups need to be cleaned out daily and the beer should be replaced every few days. Placing smooth moist structures like wooden planks around susceptible plants at ground level can make harvesting of slugs and snails much easier as they seek refuge there during the daytime. Scarecrows or old CDs tied on fishing line like this can be effective at keeping away troublesome birds. Repellents. Preventative measures are by far the best way to combat pests and disease as they stop outbreaks before they occur. If you've had a history with a particular pest in the field in the past, then you should apply repellents every seven to 14 days to ensure that they do not become a problem in this current season. Plants such as marigolds and petunias, lemongrass, basil, rosemary and mint, amongst many others, are great for repelling problem pests in the garden. These can be easily incorporated into the design of the garden, either in rows or at intervals throughout the garden. Onions, chili and garlic sprays are excellent pest repellent options. There are also many essential oils that have aromatic repellent properties including neem oil, eucalyptus, lemongrass, lavender, sage, rosemary, thyme and clove oil. Many of the mixtures of repellents double up as a control spray. Spot spraying. Most people when they see a pest outbreak will just go ahead and spray the whole field which is really not the correct way to tackle pest incidents. It is preferable to spray affected areas as spot sprays to sort out problem areas so that they don't spread into the rest of the field. Remember that these sprays will most likely kill and repel both beneficial and non-beneficial organisms. So try to limit the ecological damage you can cause by limiting the spray coverage to just affected areas. Spray the infected areas with a fine nozzle spray in the late afternoon to prevent the plants from getting stressed. Do trial sprays of plants to ensure that you have your mixtures correct and don't cause unnecessary damage. Here are a few examples of hundreds of available concoctions. Soap sprays are good at controlling aphids, scale, thrips and mites. Spray directly onto all infested surfaces to ensure that there's a full coverage on the surface of the insects. Two teaspoons of liquid soap per litre of water. Soap and oil sprays. Soap and oil sprays are more effective as they combine both the effective agents of the soap with the surface coating effects of the oil as well as some of the repellent properties to keep pests away for longer. Aphids, thrips, mealybugs, scale, and whitefly breathe through their skin, so a surface coating of oil suffocates them. The strong smelling repellent properties from chilies, onions, garlic, and other essential oil ingredients are incredibly effective at causing a hasty retreat of pests from the garden. Soap and oil sprays. Option one, One teaspoon of liquid soap. One teaspoon of vinegar. Two teaspoons of canola or soy oil. 
and one liter of water. Soap and oil sprays, option two. Crush six hot chili peppers or two tablespoons of chili powder, two bulbs of garlic and an onion to a pulp. Add one teaspoon of liquid soap and two teaspoons of vegetable oil and a cup of warm water. Let it stand overnight, then strain out the solid particles and top this mixture up with water to make up a litre. Soap and oil sprays. Option three. Neem oil, an extract from the neem tree seed, has become the most widely utilized organic oil spray against caterpillars, aphids, mites, mealybugs, and whiteflies. A simple spray onto the leaves of plants is enough to disrupt their feeding and life cycle. And although it is not instantaneous, it will kill pests. Neem oil sprays have also been found effective at deterring grasshoppers and also controlling powdery mildew. Neem oil does not harm beneficial insects. Add one teaspoon of liquid soap, two teaspoons of neem oil, and one liter of water. Milk spray. Using diluted milk and water solutions have proven as effective against powdery mildew as commercial fungicides. Milk solutions are also effective against mosaic virus, blights and other fungal infections on squashes, tomato, cucumber and other crops. Mix 100 ml of milk, apply 1 teaspoon of liquid soap with 900 ml of water. Soap and baking soda. Baking soda or bicarb is very basic. That means it has a high pH and creates a hostile environment for fungal diseases like powdery mildew and early blight on potatoes, tomatoes and squashes. Apply one teaspoon of liquid soap, one teaspoon of bicarb and one liter of water. Make sure you test spray before applying to the whole crop. Bacillus thuringiensis. A commercial option is the use of Bacillus thuringiensis or Bt. Bt is a bacterium naturally present in the soil which secretes a toxin which is only harmful to certain insect larvae. Bt is sprayed as a biological insecticide onto the leaf surfaces of many plants and is an excellent biological control mechanism against certain insect pest larvae with no known side effects on other organisms. Bt has to be eaten by the larvae in order for it to work, and once ingested, it attacks the gut lining of the insect, causing death. Dusting. Wood ash is very effective in preventing stalk borer and fall armyworm infestations in maize and sweet corn. Place a pinch of wood ash down the funnel of every sweet corn plant at knee high for stalk borer control. Post-harvest stalk lodging is also very effective at exposing overwintering stalk borer to UV light and opportunistic feeders like guinea fowls and chickens. For the control of fall armyworm in all maize cultivars, apply a pinch of wood ash every two weeks until the piping stage. This has been proven to be very effective even when neighbors have had complete failures with chemical control. Diatomaceous earth is a fine chalk-like powder made up of fossilized diatoms. When sprinkled on insect pests, it sticks to them, drawing the moisture away from their exoskeletons and causing dehydration and even death. It can also be broadcast around the base of valuable crop stems to act as a barrier to cutworms, snails and slugs. In a biologically managed garden, 
imperfections in the vegetables must be tolerated for the greater good of what you are trying to achieve. But obviously not at the expense of success. Try your utmost to avoid the use of chemical pesticides which are harmful to both humans and the environment. Remember that to wipe out all the insects, fungi and bacteria is not the objective. Instead, we are trying to encourage a healthy habitat for all creatures to coexist in balance. Ensure you practice good agronomic farming gods practices, look after the soil and its biology, provide ideal environments for healthy plants, practice minimalistic pest control and avoid chemicals if at all possible. Healthy people eat healthy plants, which come from healthy soils, which are living soils. We must do everything we can to encourage soil life, just like our Heavenly Father has shown us in His creation since the very beginning.